are as follows. Hold on, just, there we go. Our announcements for today um, aren't very complicated. The announcements that we have are during our morning service today, we are going to bless our palms and we're gonna make sure that everybody who wants one has a palm for this Palm Sunday celebration. Also coming up this week, there are two Good Friday services that I'll be participating in on Friday, April the 7th at noon at Greater New Bethel in Kansas City, Kansas. That will be the AME Ministerial Alliance's Seven Last Words service. And on that Sunday, I will be pre, I said Sunday, I'm sorry. I'm on that Friday, um, this Friday at noon at Greater New Bethel, I will be preaching word number six. Um, and then later on in the day at 6.30, p.m. in the evening at First AME, also in Kansas City, Kansas. I'll be participating in their seven last word service and I'll be preaching the third word. Um, if you are able to come to Kansas City for either of those, uh, I'd appreciate to see your face. If not, um, the noon service will be on the Midwest AME Ministerial Alliance's Facebook page and First AME's service will be on their Facebook page. Let's see. Coming up, next Sunday is Easter, everybody. Um, I, I know it seems, like, or maybe it's just me, it seems like Easter showed up really fast and so did spring. Uh, I'm not complaining because this cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot weather has been fun. Um, it's, it's nice to see spring on the way. For next Sunday for Easter, we're going to have a modified worship service. Um, in lieu of the summary of the Decalogue, we're going to have a choral poem, and members of the congregation will be our main readers. And after each of those five readers reads their part, guess what? The whole congregation gets to participate. And guess how we get to participate? We get to say, after every reader does their part, we get to say, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Easter story tells me so. And that way the whole congregation will be participating in the choral poem. Um, we also have a special call to worship for that Easter Sunday um, and a special prayer and members of the congregation are participating in all of that. Uh, I believe uh, there will also be a little something something for the younger members of the congregation that um, uh, Sister Annette is planning. So, you know, just, just be on the lookout. Um, let's see what else is coming up. Um, there will also be a special church conference on Sunday, April the 16th um, after morning worship. We'll, we'll take maybe a five or 10 minute break. And I ask for all the members to stay because we have three things on the agenda that day. That's it. We get to elect three people. We get to elect the person, the lay person. Let me be specific. All of these people must be lay people. Um, they can't be clergy. So, so that means somebody who's, who, who doesn't wear a robe and preach. Somebody who's not ordained. Um, in the AME church. Um, and they have to be a member of St. Luke as well. Um, the first person we are electing is the delegate to annual conference in September. Um, a second person that we will elect is the alternate delegate. That's the person who will take the place of the delegate if for some reason they can't make it. Um, maybe they get sick, but Lord forbid, one of the churches I passed, the, the delegate got into an accident on the way. Um, and so they, they were okay, but they missed the first day. And it just so happened that the alternate was there. So the alternate performed the duties of the delegate for the first day. And once the delegate got there the next day, they performed the duties. Um, 
And then the third person, now the third person is unique. We only do this third person election every four years. The third person is the delegate to the electoral college. And the delegate to the electoral college is the lay person from our church who will join all the other lay persons from all the other churches in the entire Midwest conference. And those 44 people will then pick 10 who will be the lay delegates to the general conference, which is the conference of the whole entire AME church all over the world that meets every four years. Um, and so that third person who is the delegate to the electoral college only has to serve at the electoral college, which means they only have to show up on the Friday of annual conference with, when the electoral college meets. Um, they have to participate in the electoral college. Uh, if they wanna run as a delegate, they get to run. If not, they get to vote for the people who will represent our church and the 43 other churches in the Midwest Conference. So those are the three people we're elected. All right, any questions? No, all right. The last announcement I have is on Saturday, April 22nd, um, beginning at 9 a.m. is the Midwest South District Conference. It will be um, in person, but it will also be via Zoom. As soon as I have the Zoom information, I will get that out to the congregation. Um, those are all the announcements I have. Before we shift and get our Sunday school reports from our young people, I do have one more thing to say. If you were born in the month of April and you're able, please stand. If not, raise your hand because we won't recognize you. Amen. All right. Okay, we're gonna sing happy birthday to you. Happy, you can sit if you want to. To you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. And many more, God bless you. All right, that covers all of our announcements and we are going to turn it over to Denver and Virginia who are going to give us our reports from first our teen young adult class and then our kids class. All right, Denver, if you could take it away and give us some highlights from your lesson. If you could start off and just tell us what the title was. Uh, yes, the title was the and it's just the story of when Jesus had left the tomb after he had died on the cross. And it's showing the different reactions of um, um, Jesus' disciples and the female disciples that mom like to put it. And how the reaction and how when the women heard about it initially, they instantly go to tell the men to tell them to repent, and the guys don't. They don't believe her at first, but Peter is just like, I got to go and I don't know. And so he goes and he, he finds his feet and he goes and he's amazed at what happens. Awesome. Anything else from the lesson that you want to share with us that stood out to you? Uh, yeah, I, I, find it, I find it interesting that like the women just instantly believe that Jesus had risen and like went to tell the men, but the men didn't believe them at first until they saw the men all the time. Which I find it interesting because I feel like I would do the same thing. That like if somebody told me that the person I've been following for a long time who I witnessed die in two days prior suddenly just like is fine for their for their taxes and stuff, I would be suspicious and I would not believe them until they showed it to me and I'd be like, 
Okay. Anything else you want to share with us? No. All right. Uh, thank you. I see Virginia's getting herself together. Can you tell us the title of your Sunday school lesson? All right, go for it. He is alive. Who's the he? Jesus. All right. Anything else you want to tell us about your lesson that you learned? Hebrew. All right, go for it. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Very good. Anything else? No more All right. All right, share that. Jesus is really alive. And what's the other thing? Uh, All right. Tell us about that. What was that activity? Uh, what I know about Jesus. Okay, what you know about Jesus. So what are some things you know about Jesus? He gives the Holy Spirit. He gives the Holy Spirit. Jesus saves people. Jesus loves everybody. Jesus loves to protect us. He is our Savior. All right. All right. Is that, that conclude your Sunday school lesson? Yep. All right. Thank you very much. As we prepare to shift to our order of service today, um, I just want to remind us of, of a couple of things. Um, we will be blessing our palms and they'll be handed out to everybody. And then later on, we'll be celebrating Holy Communion. Um, as, as I'm doing all that, um, I'm also going to go over our order of service for us today. Um, we will go into our doxology. We'll do our call to worship, which is printed in your worship guide. We'll do that responsibly. We'll do the morning prayer. We'll have a prayer response. I will lead us in the prayer of perfection. Then I'll lead us in the prayer of adoration. And then I'll come down, I'll bless the palms and I will stand in the middle and I, I can give out the palms to everybody, all right? And then after that, we'll have our first selection which is hymn number 258 in our AME hymn notes, Just As I Am. I'll lead us in our scripture readings which are Isaiah 50 verses four through nine, and Philippians two, verses five through 11. Then I will do the summary of our Decalogue and we'll sing our Gloria Patri together after that. We'll do our altar call. We'll do our tithes and offerings. We'll have a second selection, hymn number 137, the blood will never lose its power. I'll go into the morning message. We'll do our decision time. After our decision time, we'll say the Apostles' Creed together. We'll go over our general confession. I'll lead us in the prayer of humiliation, followed by the prayer of consecration. I'll do the solicitation and I'll come out front um, once again to hand out our communion elements. And once everybody has them, we can go to our seats and we will eat the bread together and then we'll drink the juice together. Um, we'll do our closing song, What a Fellowship, which is hymn number 525, and then I will lead us in our benediction. Um, one other announcement before we start our worship service, because I forgot to announce it, 
Um, we are still asking those who can and who are able to give a sacrificial gift over and above their regular offering um, this Sunday and the Sundays in the month of April going through to the first Sunday in May and all that we have collected. Um, we are trying to come up with $300 to give to the conference WMS and YPD to offset the shortfall that they have in order to go to Orlando um, in July for their quadrennial convention. Y'all know how I said next year, the whole AME church is coming together. Well, the year before that, the WMS and the YPD from all over the world come together for their mission meeting. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. Airline prices have skyrocketed. Um, food prices have skyrocketed. Um, everything is skyrocketed. And although they had a budget and we paid fair share and they've done fundraisers, they don't have all they need to make sure that their whole entire delegation can both get there and when they get there, be able to stay and eat and be comfortable. Um, so anything that you can give over these next four Sundays, over and above, we're collecting so that we can be a blessing um, to our adult missionaries and to our youth missionaries. All right. Um, let's stand for our doxology. Blessings flow. Praise Creatures here we go. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Our call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For in thy courts is better than thou. I'd rather be a Lord keep the house of my God than dwell in the tombs Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the Lord's God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. The Lord is in the Lord's temple, and all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he is the Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we prepare for prayer. Wonder working, all loving, fabulous God. Lord God, Lamb of God, right now, today, on this first Sunday in April, when we celebrate Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday, we want you to know that you're welcome among us. Have your way, oh God. We're inviting you to search us and try us and if you find anything in us that's not like you if you would replace it replace it with health with strength with love with hope with joy with peace so that when we leave this place we're not just excited for one day we are excited because you have changed us you have transformed us you have empowered us you have saved us you have comforted us so high your way. In the strong name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Our prayer of perfection. Almighty God, 
unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the, your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should in all places and at all times give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and with archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord, most high. Amen. All right. I am going to come down and bless our palms, and then I'm going to bring them out so that we can gift them to everybody. <laughs> this blessing can be heard coming from a long way off. This blessing is making its steady way up the road towards you. This blessing blooms in the throats of women, screams from the hearts of men, tumbles out of the mouths of children. This blessing is stitched into the seams of the cloaks that line the road, etched into the branches that trace the path, echoes in the breathing of the willing coat. The click of the donkey's hook against the stones. Something is rising beneath this blessing. Something will try to drown it out. But this blessing cannot be turned back, cannot be made to steal its voice, cannot cease to sing its praise of the one who comes along the way. Amen. Our palms are blessed for yet another year. And I'm going to come and give them out there. Now I'm going to bring both of them. I, I, I can't count by face. <laughs> May the joy and blessing of Palm Sunday allow you to experience God's good and great love, power, joy, and peace. As we prepare to celebrate this Passion and Palm Sunday, I invite you, when you feel like giving God some praise and some glory, to just wave your palm. When you feel like just saying, God is all that, just wave your palm. And if you feel like shouting it or singing it or saying it, that's okay too, because on that first Palm Sunday, on that first Passion Sunday, the folk 
who saw Jesus coming were so excited that they started an impromptu parade that, that, that was so unique and so special that the folks in charge of the city told Jesus to tell them to hush. And y'all know what Jesus, you, do y'all know what Jesus' response to that call to hush was? Jesus said, well, if they keep quiet, then the rocks are going to cry out. Ain't it amazing that we can have such a profound experience of God that the spaces and the places where we have it have memory of what we have experienced. And if we shut our mouths, the walls will cry out. If we shut our mouths, the floor will start to rumble. If we shut our mouths, the birds will begin to sing. If we shut our mouths, the trees will begin to wail. If we shut our mouths, the very wind will begin to blow because the truth is, when God shows up and God shows out, everybody and everything notices. God bless you. Amen. All right. I am now supposed to let us know that we are going to sing our first selection. It is hymn number 258, Just As I Am, Without One. Just as I am, I come. Amen. Our scripture lessons for today are Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9, and Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. I will be reading both of them from the New Revised Standard Version updated edition. When you have Isaiah 50, verses 4 through 9, feel free to say amen. Listen for the word of God. The Lord God has given me a trained tongue that I might know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear 
and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand in court together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garden. The moth will eat them up. Then once again, that New Testament lesson from the book of Philippians chapter two, verses five through 11. That's Philippians chapter two, verses five through 11. When you have that, say amen. Also from the New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking on the form of a slave, assuming human likeness, and being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name. So that at the name of they given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father, amen. Our summary of the Decalogue goes simply like this. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior says that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind because it's the first and the great commandment. We also have to learn to love our neighbors just like we love ourselves because on these two commandments depend every law and every prophet. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without it. Church, this is one of those moments where we all get a chance to participate. The altar call is that moment in the service where you can take to God your cares, your joys, your fears. It's prayer time. You can come to the altar and pray, or you can pray in your seat. But please take advantage of this time to connect with God. The altar is open. Will you come?
If you order our steps, Lord, we'll praise you. If you order our steps, Lord, we'll sound the alarm. If, if, if you order our steps, we'll make sure that we're not the only people whose steps get ordered. So just order our steps in your word. Order our steps in your word. So this is another one of the opportunities where we all get a chance to participate. It's time for our tithes and offerings. This is the moment where we can give back to God a portion of what God has given to us. And we ask that we each prepare to give from the heart. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for owning the cattle on a thousand hills and for making ways for us, for undergirding us, for blessing us, for strengthening us, for providing for us, and also God, for gifting us with the capacity to give back to you and also to be a blessing to others. We ask that you allow this offering to be used for your kingdom glory. Amen. 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 Today is mine. All things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thy Lord as we give the You may be seated as we prepare to sing as our sermonic selection, The Blood Will Never Lose Its Power, hymn number 137. Yeah. 
The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary will never, 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 never lose its power. Amen. Let's pray. Wonder working God, we ask that you allow Rachel to decrease so that you can increase. We, we, we ask, oh God, that you would send us the word of life, the word of health, the word of joy that we need. Have your way, oh God, in Jesus name. Amen. So if y'all could indulge me for a little bit, and if you could open your Bibles back up to Philippians chapter two, I would like to read verses five through 11 again. This time I'm gonna read it from the New Living Translation. Philippians chapter two, verses five through 11 from the New Living Translation. Listen for the word of God. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. We usually say amen because we recognize that this passage of scripture isn't just any old passage of scripture. We, we recognize it as a prayer or a song or a poem, something that the people of God came together and, and said or, or sang or prayed to remind themselves of just who Jesus is and what it could mean for us. So on this Palm Sunday, on this Passion Sunday, on this Communion Sunday, I'd like us to consider the thought that that Passion Sunday, that Palm Sunday was a day of both and. Um, I don't know about y'all, but one of the things that as a pastor, as a preacher, that, 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 that is always a dilemma for me when we begin to enter Holy Week is how we deal with this day. We, we have a tendency in the history of Christianity to either call it Palm Sunday and wanna wave our palms and celebrate how awesome Jesus is, how he comes into Jerusalem with victory, how, how he steps into the temple and when stuff ain't right in the church house, he makes it right. We, we like to celebrate him as that kind of champion, right? That's Palm Sunday. And, and do you know that the scriptures we tend to read when we focus on the day as a day of champions, as a day of triumph are all about that. But y'all know on that same day, just a few hours later, some of the same folk that, that, that shouted, Hosanna, 
save us now, said, crucify him. On the same day that it is Palm Sunday, on the same day that we celebrate Jesus as the one who just might deliver us, who just might free us, we also celebrate as the day when he allowed us to betray him, to abandon him, to arrest him, to torture him, to call him everything but a child of God and then submit him to the most gruesome form of capital punishment that any group of human beings have ever inflicted upon each other. It is not Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday, church. It's Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday. Because the same Jesus who humbly rides on a donkey is the same Jesus who is willing to let us be us so that he can make us over again. The, the, the same Jesus who, when they came at him, could have called the winds and said, uh-uh, uh-uh, didn't even have to call on some angels. He could have just said to the trees, do you see them trying to arrest me? Y'all ain't going to do nothing. You know, he is the same Jesus who calmed the sea, right? So if he could calm the sea, he could call the trees to his defense. Um, um, he, he, he is the same Jesus who is the truth and the life. So when they called him out and they showered lies on him, he could have spoke truth about their lives. He did it with a woman um, from Samaria who met him at the wall, at the well. So, so if he could do it for her, he could have called them out on their stuff too. He was God. But he chose not to reach for more than God intended so that all of us could be restored. Watch this, watch this. So, so here's the thing about this description of Jesus in the Philippian song of praise that, that, that boggles my mind. He could have asserted his privilege, but he chose not to. He could have come at us with power and judgment, but he chose not to. He chose not to because he had made himself obedient to the plan of God. He trusted God the Father enough to know that whatever he was about to go through was for the good of all of us. And he was willing to become less so that we could become more. He was willing not to assert his privilege so that we could claim ours. Did y'all get that? God in flesh chose flesh over godliness so that flesh could get back to God. Um, okay, um, let me break it down to you. So y'all know that story about Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis? There, there was this serpent, right? And he came and he messed with their minds and he convinced them that there was more they could be so that God would love them more. That there was something more they could do so that God would be closer to them. That there was something more, there was something more, there was something more, there was something more that God was denying them. But if they got it, they would be closer to God than they were before. Y'all do understand that that was the trick of the devil, right? They already had a tight relationship with the Lord, but for some reason they were convinced that they needed something more, something more that God hadn't yet granted them, something more that God was holding back from them. And because they wanted that something more, they reached out and they took it. And when they took it, the something more that they got didn't bring them closer to God, but further away. 
Jesus models for us that every time that we reach for something more that God hasn't gifted us, every time that we reach for something more that God hasn't opened up to us yet, every time we reach for something more so that we can get closer to God, we get further away from God. So instead of reaching for something more, we ought to open our hands and say, God, if you got something more for me, put it in my hand. And if I ain't ready for it, grow me so I am. When we yield ourselves to the will of God, when we choose not to assert our privilege and instead claim the one who gave us the privilege in the first place and allow the God of all creation to show us how to live, how to love, how to have joy, how to have peace, then, then guess what? We become the beloved community that God is returning for. We become a different place and a different space than the Philippian church that Paul is writing to. Do y'all know that Paul interrupts his stay in jail to write a letter to the church at Philippi because they call themselves a community of Christ. They call themselves believers in Jesus Christ but they allowing an argument between two female leaders of the church to tear the church up. Instead of trying to convince these two women to disagree without being disagreeable, they take sides, y'all. Instead of trying to help them look to God to mend what they can't mend on their own, they take sides, but that ain't all, that ain't all. In the church of God, there are people in the church of God who try to be big in such a way that they make other folk feel small, who try to be big in such a way that they make other folk feel unwelcome, who try to grab for something more that God never intended for them to have in the first place, because they wasn't ready for it. And so Paul is inspired to send a letter to this church that he founded, by the way, from jail. Imagine going through your own situation. So much so that folk came to minister to you and you pause from going through your own situation, you choose not to use your own privilege. Because you know, when you're going through and, and you sad and you suffering and you sick, you got some privilege. You expect some folk to take care of you, but, 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 but what if instead you choose to allow God to use you to be a blessing to the very folk who showed up to bless you. What if you could model the mind and attitude of Jesus Christ in such a way that everybody knew that they were loved by God, that everybody knew that God had a purpose for them, that everybody knew that they were welcome, that everybody knew that there was hope, that everybody knew that there was joy, that everybody knew that there was peace. What if we church differently? What if we sang differently? What if we prayed differently? What if we ate differently? What if we walked differently? What if we thought differently? What if we loved differently? What if we thought differently? What if we forgave differently? What if we reconciled differently? What if we had the mind of Christ? And we allow God to direct what we said. We allow God to direct how we clapped. We allow God to direct how we celebrated. And we allow God to direct how we grieve. What if we recognize that every day 
that God gives us is a day of both and. It is a day to not hide the fact that we are part of the beloved community. And it is a day to make sure that others know they can be part of it too. It's a day of both and. It's a day to cry when tragedy hits. And it's a day to laugh when you remember that the one you lost loved you so well and so good. It's a day of both and. It's a day to celebrate the triumph of God and to cry over the reality that so that we could be saved, Jesus had to go through some nasty stuff. It's a day of both and. And as long as we are not willing to see Jesus as who Jesus is on Palm and Passion Sunday, as long as we are not willing to see Jesus as the one who doesn't always exert his privilege, but sometimes does, because y'all do know on the same day, he rode in with triumph. On the same day, he kicked folk out the temple who were doing things that were not of God. But on the same day, when they called him out his name, he didn't say nothing. That is all Jesus. If we're only looking for a champion who will ride into our lives and ride into our cities with power and will trigger impromptu parades, we put Jesus in a box and he don't belong there. If we're only looking for a savior who is humble and never says a mumbling word and never speaks truth to power, who never calls us on our stuff, we've got Jesus in a box and he doesn't belong there. He is both the conquering king and the humble lamb. He is all that. He is all that. And as long as we can't accept and acknowledge all of who Jesus is, I hate to burst our bubbles on this first Sunday in April, on Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday, on Holy Communion Sunday, if we can't accept Jesus as all of who Jesus is, even the stuff that makes us uncomfortable, if we can't accept Jesus as all of who Jesus is, if we can't allow this day to be the day of both and where we see Jesus as all of who Jesus is, we will never be all of who God wants us to be. Because if we can't see Jesus in all of Jesus's Jesusness, then we can't see ourselves in all of our usness. And when we can't acknowledge that some of us would have betrayed him, if we can't acknowledge that some of us would have left him, if we can't acknowledge that some of us would have followed, but only from a distance, if we can't acknowledge all of our usness, that even in our denial, even in our betrayal, even in our desertion, there was a part of us who was still hoping that he would save, there was part of us who was still hoping that he would deliver, that even in the moments when we doubt, even in the moments when we are not right, there's a part of us who wants to be right. If we can't acknowledge all of our all of our usness, then we can't be the church that Jesus is returning for because I hate to burst our bubble. God sees us. God hears us. God cares for us. And God knows us better than we know ourselves. So even the stuff that when you look in the mirror, even the stuff that when you push replay on the recorder, even the stuff that you don't want to acknowledge that is part of you, God knows it. And if God don't want it in you, all you got to do is say, God, my hand is open. If I ain't supposed to have it, take it away. If I am supposed to have it, place it in my hand. Let me be who you have saved and created me to be. I will be less so that you will be greater because greater is you who is in me than anything in the world. Look, church, today needs to be a day of both things. 
It needs to be the day that we celebrate that Christ is here. And it needs to be a day where we offer Christ to folk who don't know that Christ being here makes all the difference in the world. It's the day of both and. But if we can't see it, if we can't acknowledge it, if we can't celebrate it, then we can't be the people that God is returning for. And I don't know about you. I want to be all in. Okay, so I'm about to date myself, right? Y'all ready? I'm down with G-O-D, you know me. I'm down with G-O-D, you owe me. I'm down with G-O-D, you know me. I'm down with G-O-D, you know me. I'm down with G-O-D, you know me. And if you don't, that's okay. Get to know the one who saved me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Our thanks and praise be to God. So this is one of those moments in the service I love, right? I love decision time because as the pastor, you get to be in front of people. Um, but as the congregation, it's in decision time when you get to respond to what God is revealing to you. It's when you get to acknowledge that what you have experienced through the worship service, through the singing, through the praying, through, through, through the worshiping, through the praising, through the preaching, through all of the service has made a difference in your life. So for decision time, I got a few decisions I'm gonna offer to you. You ready for the first one? If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, if you ain't down with G-O-D because you didn't know it was a possibility, I want you to know that Jesus can be your Lord and your Savior. And you can do more than the anonymous crowd who at the fullness of time will be duty bound to call him Lord. You can actually mean it. Because you know folks say stuff that they don't mean. So, 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 so here's the first decision. You can pray a prayer something like this. Lord God, thank you for offering me the gift of salvation. I want you to be Lord of my life. Come in, make me over again, make me yours. In Jesus name, amen. If you pray, pray that prayer of anything like it, I want you to know that you receive the gift of salvation. And that's one decision that will carry you through life. Um, a second decision is if you're looking for a church home, St. Luke is not perfect, but if you'd like to hook up with a congregation who can help you work out your soul salvation, well, St. Luke might be the place. So if you're here today and you'd like to join this fellowship of believers, the altar is open for you. Is there one? A third decision you can make is a decision for special prayer. If you'd like special prayer today, the altar is open for you. Is there one that would like special prayer today? There's room at the cross for you. Is there one? All right.
We are going to do our affirmation of faith, which is our Apostles' Creed. Let's say that together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our general confession, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people. We acknowledge and be well our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayer of humiliation. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Amen. Our prayer of consecration. Today, we enter your temple, doing as you commanded us to do, so that our devotion does not die. We hold these ancient symbols of bread and wine, reminding us of the meal you shared with your disciples, a meal through which they and we should remember you even as you remember us. It was the night you were betrayed by one disciple, misunderstood by another and abandoned by the others. You took bread. and wine and blessed them and made them a sacrament. We once again consecrate these tokens, not as relics, but as reminders of your sacrifice of body and blood, broken and shed because of your great love at Calvary, now in different spaces made sacred by our present purpose. We partake of the bread and sip from the cup. We feast on these emblems of faith. Grateful that you are forever present with us as healer, comforter, deliverer, and blessed Savior forever. Amen. Amen.
I am going to invite folks to come forward to receive your communion element, and then when you return to your seat, um, you are invited to celebrate public communion with us together. If you're able, if you can come forward, I can give you your celebration, a day of grief, a day to praise the Lord with shouts of Hosanna and to admit that he had to die so that we could live because of our own choices. It's a day of both and. It's a day to know that Jesus saves and Jesus comforts. It's a day to know that there is no box that we can put him in that he belongs in. It's a day of both things. And when we can acknowledge it, we can become the people that Jesus is returning for. Um, let's stand for our benediction.
Now may the love of God surround us. May the strength of Christ uplift us. May peace from the Holy Spirit bring grace to unite us now and forevermore. Let all God's people say, amen. Amen, amen, amen.